Hey artists, I'm back to the sculpture and this time I'm concentrating just a little bit more on the details. Starting with the face, as you can see, I'm adding a few more details. I've been a little bit confused as to what I want, but I figured it out. So here I'm just adding some of the details of the face, the structure, the ears. I've been working on the ponytail. And of course this model has the hair pulled back, but lately I've been wanting something else. So here the acromion. So all of it is about creating the shape and I'm trying to create shapes, but I'm also trying to be a little bit true to the body. And I look for particular sections of fat. This model is very fit. So as you can see from the back, she has plenty of muscles. You can see the scapula. You can see the rotation of all the muscles, the infraspinatus, the teres major. And it's all there. But, you know, the photography on these reference photos that I'm using is not quite what I would like. If you do intend on using reference, make sure that you get very good photos because you want to be able to zoom in and be able to make a distinction of the muscles. So here you can see me using a red cloth, which is a shop towel. Burlap has the same effect and you're basically trying to blend the muscle together using the burlap or the shop towel. The shop towel does create a lot of texture, but it's kind of like the scraping tool that I use. You scrape away, you do remove a little bit, but the goal is to blend muscle groups together and make a shape that's one shape. So if that makes sense, but the burlap and the shop towel do the same thing. I keep going back and forth and correcting my shape. So if I feel that the bone is coming out, say the acromion process, I will go back with my wooden tools and I'll create those shapes. So here I'm working on the face. Another favorite tool to use is my uh, bristle brushes and silicone tools. Uh, you can get all of this stuff at your local uh, art shop. So on this I am still adding the eyes straight away but I decided to make the sculpture look down and actually at a certain point I'm I think I will make them completely closed because I think that would say a different look. I see this often in sculptors and often I think it's a little bit of a cop out when they do the closed eyes because there's a lot more complexity with the eye open. But for this, I kind of feel like it would be a good expression to have the eyes closed and maybe having like the lids and the eyelashes a little bit more visible. So here I removed the ponytail and I scraped it pretty well. I removed a little bit more than I needed because I will be adding more moist clay on top. So the goal here is to add a hairstyle that I tend to like in models. It's a very contemporary or it should be like more of a 1920s look but it's uh, more and more contemporary these days. It's a short haircut what I like about this haircut is that it doesn't hide a lot of the neck, but it's still like kind of wavy. So at this point, I'm adding a little bit more of the hair. So I'm trying to give it a little bit more body. And I still plan on adding more hair as I work on the sculpture. So I'm trying to create the details at the back. I go over it and over it again, and I create the detail. For the fingers, I try to create it almost abstractly. I do like the geometry-based sculpting. If you look at any of my sculptures, I do kind of keep things nice and flat because I like how it looks. Um, so the legs should be spread out quite a bit more because of the fat. As it uh, pushes up, it'll spread the thighs a little bit. Using the shop towel, I try and blend all the muscle groups together. So at this point, you're starting to see some of the details. So there's a line going down the abdominals. It's the linea alba, and it divides the abdominals. So everybody's got that concave or the indentation in the middle of their abs. Even if you have plenty of fat, you'll still see that, especially below the navel. 
here I'm adding a the very subtle distinction of the fat kind of going over and spreading as it meets the lower leg. So this sculpture is fairly big and it's taking a little bit too much time. But I do like in a way the symmetrical nature of it, except for the hair. The hair is very asymmetrical. You know, one side is kind of blowing a little bit in the wind. Here we go, you see the the um, fingers. They're very geometrical. In a way, I like that. I like to finish the faces and then kind of let everything kind of become much looser. All right, that's pretty much the sculpture for today. And I'm probably going to finish this up pretty quickly. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.